Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you how I used the Homer Grid optimization model to find the best way to use solar and storage to reduce utility costs at a large office building in Oakland, California. Homer Grid's main value proposition is reducing utility charges by using solar and storage to shift and smooth peak utility usage to times when rates are lower. Demand charges are based on the maximum load, typically for just 15 minutes. Time of use rates provide less expensive electricity at certain times. Solar and storage together can reduce both these rates. In addition to reducing utility charges, Homer Grid can model EV charging infrastructure loads, design for resiliency during outages, and model combined heat and power. We explore those functions in other videos. If you're new to Homer Grid, there's a tour to help you understand the interface, a setup assistant to help you create a simple project, and sample files, which are complete work examples you can use to learn or as templates for your own projects. Let's continue on to Homer Grid. We'll start by recording some basic information about the project. The location is important because it will be used later to find other data that we can use in our model. We'll give the project a name, record who did the analysis, and write a little bit about what it's about. Also on this page are three critical inputs to your project. The discount rate, which is the nominal interest rate, the inflation rate, and the project lifetime. Homer Grid gives you default values for those, and we'll use those defaults for this demonstration. At the bottom of the screen is a section labeled Required Changes. Red buttons here are things that are truly required. Homer will not run without them. In this case, adding a primary load and a utility. Green buttons are suggestions, things you may have overlooked. And yellow buttons are things you should pay close attention to, especially when you're starting out. Homer will still run, but you may not get an optimal design. So let's add a primary load to our model. Homer offers three ways to get load data into a project. If you have measured load data available, importing that directly into Homer will be your best option. If you don't have data, for example, if the facility isn't yet built, the OpenEI database offers typical loads from various facility types around the US, which should cover most types of facilities and climates anywhere in the world. And finally, we have four synthetically built load profiles that you can use and then adjust in Homer to get close to what you think your load will be. We'll cover loads in a later video, but I want to point out some highlights here. The heat map in the middle of the page is a visualization of the load for the entire year. This load has an average daily usage of 16,434 kilowatt hours, a peak of 1,500 kilowatts, and is highest in August, probably due to air conditioning usage. The column of numbers to the left of the heat map are the hourly averages for one month. Because this is an office building, the load is lowest at night and then peaks during the day when people are at work. Next, we'll add a utility. If your project is in North America, Homer Grid offers a database of most commercial and industrial utility tariffs that you can access directly. If your tariff is not in the Genability database, you can still use Homer Grid. You can enter your tariff structure directly into Homer, or we can help you build almost any tariff. For this demo, we'll use the tariff database. Homer has already loaded the zip code in for our project, so I just click Get Tariffs. Now you need to know the exact name of the tariff and the utility. I need the PG&E Extra Large General Time of Use Net Metering Tariff for this facility, so first I'll sort by name, and then find the exact tariff that I need. This tariff has some options I need to set to match this facility's particular setting. It doesn't really matter to the demo, so we'll just do that quickly. You can explore these other tabs that give lots of detail on how the tariff works, how the demands work by hour and a kilowatt and so forth. I recommend that you explore the tariff tabs in your model to see what's there. Now that we have a load and utility, we have the basics of a power system. 
Homer provides a schematic of the system that's always visible in the upper right corner when you're in this design phase. Now it shows the primary load with the average daily use and peak and also the utility. Now we're ready to add in the renewable and storage components that we want Homer to consider. You don't need to know exactly what you're going to use because Homer will help you with that but you do need to tell Homer what might be possible, what you want it to consider. We know that we want to explore solar PV, so let's add that. Again, Homer has lots of options, including importing PV production data from Helioscope or PV Syst, importing your own data, but we just want this to be simple, so we'll use generic PV. Homer defaults to a sizing setting called the Homer Optimizer, which is a proprietary algorithm that's going to look for the best option in sizing. I recommend this when you're starting out. However, there is one important advanced setting you should use, and that is an upper limit based on your available space. This is a large office building with an adjacent parking garage, which will allow for about 2000 kW of PV, so I'll add that as an upper limit. Now our schematic shows PV on it. Solar PV needs a solar resource, and you can either import data or most people will download data from either NREL or NASA. So after I click download from internet, I'm going to choose the NREL data, which are usually best for the US. And here's a visualization of the solar resource data. Homer will always suggest that you add storage if you have PV, so let's do that next. We'll use a generic lithium-ion battery for this model, although Homer offers us many different choices and we can also build our own. Again, we'll use the optimizer so we don't need to change anything. Now our system needs a converter, so let's add that. We'll just use the defaults that Homer chooses for us here. And now our schematic shows all the pieces that Homer is going to model as potential options for this project. At this point, we could add any incentives that are available to the project, or if we had or wanted a backup generator, we could add that, but we can add those things later. We're ready to look at the results, so we click the button here, and Homer begins simulating thousands of possible systems. This is the summary results page, and let's take a moment to walk through this. The center of the page is a graph of cumulative cash flow over the lifetime of the project, comparing the straight utility with the optimized solar and storage system. The details of these are here on the left, what Homer calls the winning system, which is the utility with 2000 kW of PV, lithium ion batteries, and a converter. The base case, which is the utility tariff we selected, is shown underneath that. This project has an internal rate of return of 8.6%, a 5.8% return on investment, and a simple payback of 10 years. To the right of the graph is a summary of costs for the two systems. The table below that summarizes the various savings, nearly $5 million total. Recall that reducing demand charges was one thing we were looking to do, and this project is saving $88,000 per year in demand charges. And this is all before adding any incentive programs, which can significantly increase ROI for many projects. Homer is showing a recommendation to increase the amount of PV. It will almost always do this because PV is so inexpensive that it makes sense to use as much as possible. But we already set the maximum based on the available space. So we will ignore this particular warning. Now, let's dig a little more deeply into these results by clicking on the Tables tab. Each row of this table shows the least expensive option for a particular combination of components. The top line is the winning system, utility with PV plus storage. The next line is the utility with just PV. The next line is the utility only. And finally, the utility with storage. And we have the same information, and I won't go into the details of this here, there's lots of information here 
for each one of these systems, and I recommend that you do explore that on your own. So recall that Homer simulated thousands of systems, but we see only four rows. Each one of these rows can represent hundreds of possible systems that Homer explored. If I place the mouse on a row and then click this Overall button, Homer shows me all the systems that were simulated for a year, hour by hour. Only the least expensive one for each possible combination is shown on the results page. So let's go back to our best or winning system and look more deeply at it by double clicking. This pop-up window has detailed results for cost, cash flow, emissions, comparative economics, electrical, and each part of your hybrid power system. The Time Series Plot button in the lower right accesses a powerful data viewer that lets you dig deeply into every number that Homer used in your analysis. I definitely recommend that you explore this feature on your own. We'll finish by creating a proposal or report that you can use to share your model with the client or your team. You can select either a client proposal or an engineer detail report. We'll use the client proposal option. You can customize or change any of the information here. I won't fill in these details, but you have lots of ways to make this your own. This important page lets you choose which sections will be in the report or proposal and also lets you rearrange things, rearrange the order of things if you want. Finally, you select your paper format and click Open Report. Microsoft Word opens with your fully formatted report. And because it's in Word, you can further modify it as needed, take things out, give it to your branding team, whatever you need to do to get it ready for your clients. Thanks for watching this video today. You can get a no obligation trial for Homer Grid by visiting homerenergy.com slash trygrid. I also hope you'll explore everything else that Homer Grid can do for you and stay in touch with us as you explore Homer Grid during the trial process.